Hello everyone! In this video, we'll examine current operations at the ANA Food Terminal, which is an N-scale switching layout based on the Niagara Frontier Food Terminal in Buffalo, New York. The system I'm going to use to perform the operations is still being explored, but the basics of how the terminal is switched will remain the same. Let's first take a look at the track plan. The ANA Food Terminal is a simple four-track receiving yard with certain tracks dedicated to different types of goods and tenant leased unloading areas. The northernmost track, which is towards the back of the layout, is the warehouse track, which has spots predominantly for unloading refrigerated boxcars and for tenants that lease the convenient premium price spaces inside the warehouse with the integrated loading dock. This track has four unloading spots at the dock and an additional spot next to the plank crossing in case someone is expecting an express delivery. The other three tracks are team tracks, where tenants can back their trucks and trailers up to the boxcars to unload them. The longest track has five unloading spots, and the second longest has two. The southernmost track is typically reserved for putting together outgoing trains, but its single unloading spot can be used in a pinch if the yard gets too full. Let's now take a look at the current state of the yard. There are several cars on both the warehouse and team tracks right now. The three box cars on the team tracks are all empty, and so they will need to be part of the next outgoing train. The two reefers on the warehouse track are also empty, so they'll also be a part of the outgoing train. The box car containing glass jars is still unloading, so it'll stay in the yard. One of the rules to follow at the ANA Food Terminal when switching is if a rail car needs to be moved in the yard that's not empty, it must be put back in the same place it was before the switching occurred. This is due to one of the perks outlined in the tenant's lease agreement, which states that once the tenant is unloading a rail car, that rail car will remain in that spot until it's empty. The one exception is when the rail car is blocking the rest of the yard to be switched, in which case the tenant needs to pause their unloading until the switching is complete. At that point, the terminal must honor the agreement by making sure the yard crew places the rail car back to the spot where the tenant was unloading it. This afternoon's incoming train consists of three carloads of cereal, rice, and other non-perishables, a carload of refined sugar, and a special delivery of grapes from Napa Valley. The dry goods are to be placed on the team tracks, with the sugar and grapes going to the tenants on the warehouse track. The first order of business is to clear the team track where the incoming non-perishable deliveries are to be placed. We'll move the empty box car into the track with the other pickups. Now we can spot the incoming boxcars onto the empty team track. Next, we'll grab the outgoing reefers from the warehouse track. Those we'll also place over on the team tracks where we'll assemble the outgoing train. Now we can spot the incoming cars on the warehouse track, remembering to spot the car with the glass jars where we found it. Since it was spotted near the front of the warehouse, we'll need to rearrange our train to make sure it ends up in the proper spot. Respecting the perks outlined in the tenant's lease agreement makes the terminal profitable, as it allows the tenants to save time and effort in their own operations, which in turn keeps them happy and reduces tenant turnover.
Lastly, we can assemble our outgoing train from the team tracks and head out. Even though this layout is set sometime between the late 40s and early 50s, there's no need to worry about having a caboose on the trains. This is due to the fact that the prototype food terminal was located just off one of the main classification yards in Buffalo, New York, so the actual terminal never needed to be concerned with having a caboose track, since it was already handled over at the main yard. Being so close to the yard made the terminal's location so ideal, since it had a direct connection to all the rail traffic flowing through the area. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this operating session and overview of the a, a Food Terminal. If you haven't already, consider subscribing so you can catch future videos like this one. And as always, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll catch you next time.